Have you ever wondered what are the causes behind a plane crash? Is it fate? Was it just your unlucky day? Or perhaps, is there a more logical reasoning behind it? We can see that there are numerous factors leading to a plane crash, but there are definitely concrete and logical reasons behind every plane incident. Don't you think so? In this video, we'll uncover the science behind plane crashes, specifically we'll be touching on how the weight and balance affects the aircraft performance and how proper loading of the aircraft will significantly minimize the chances of an accident occurring. Are you guys ready? Let's go! First, let's find out how flight occurs. The four forces of flight, namely weight, lift, thrust and drag, are the key elements for an aircraft to fly. And this is well associated with the weight and balance of an aircraft. When an aircraft flies horizontally at a steady speed, Lift from the wings exactly balances the aircraft's weight, and the thrust exactly balances the drag. Although maintaining a stable flight requires a balance in these four forces, this stability cannot be achieved without proper weight and balance. So, what is weight and balance? There are many factors that contribute to the safe and efficient operation of an aircraft, which includes proper weight and balance control. The weight and balance system commonly employed among aircrafts consists of three equally important elements the weighing of the aircraft, the maintaining of the weight and balance records and the proper loading of the aircraft. An inaccuracy in one of these elements defeats the entire purpose of the system. The final loading calculations will be meaningless if either the aircraft has been improperly weighed or the records contain an error. Improper loading decreases the efficiency and performance of an aircraft from the standpoint of altitude, maneuverability, rate of climb and speed. It may even be the cause of failure to complete the flight or for that matter, failure to start the flight. Due to the abnormal stresses placed upon the structure of an improperly loaded aircraft or because of changed flying characteristics of the aircraft, loss of life and destruction of valuable equipment may result. Modern aircrafts today are engineered utilizing state-of-the-art technology and materials to achieve maximum reliability and performance for the intended category of flight. The care and expertise exercised in the designing and manufacturing of an aircraft is as equally important as operating and maintaining them. Firstly, the designers of an aircraft set the maximum weight based on the amount of lift the wings can provide under the operational conditions for the aircraft design. They then carefully determine the ideal center of gravity and calculate the maximum allowable deviation from this specific location. Next, the manufacturer provides the aircraft operator with the empty weight of the aircraft and the location of its empty weight center of gravity at the time the certified aircraft leaves the factory. Now, you must be wondering how an aircraft is weighed. Aircraft loading can be processed manually on specific forms designed for use with each specific aircraft type using load sheets, which consists of two parts, the weight sheet and the trim sheet. However, nowadays with the use of highly sophisticated software such as Sable and Lido, it significantly helps to aid and expedite this process. You might ask, what if there are changes to be made after the load sheet has been processed? Well, adjustments made to the load sheet after its completion is not uncommon at all. These are known as last minute changes, whereby load controllers can enter late amendments to the final physical or software produced load sheet without preparing an entire new document. Moving on to weight calculations. In the weight sheet, the fuel weights, maximum weights and operating weights are all calculated. Firstly, the fuel weights consist of block fuel and takeoff fuel. Block fuel is the total fuel required for a flight, which includes taxi fuel, trip fuel as well as alternate fuel. Takeoff fuel on the other hand is the block fuel without the taxi fuel as your taxi fuel has already been used up. Next, the maximum zero fuel weight is the total weight of the aircraft less all usable fuel 
and other specified usable agents, as limited by aircraft strength and airworthiness requirement. Moving on, the maximum takeoff weight is the maximum mass where the aircraft is certified for takeoff due to structural or other limits. It includes the dry operating weight, payload weight, and the block fuel minus the taxi fuel. In addition, the maximum landing weight is the maximum aircraft gross rate due to design or operational limitations when an aircraft is permitted to land. The maximum landing weight is obtained by taking takeoff weight minus trip fuel. Lastly, operating weights consist of dry operating weight, zero fuel weight, and takeoff weight. Dry operating weight is the basic weight of an aircraft, excluding payload and usable fuel. Zero fuel weight is the total weight of an aircraft without the total weight of usable fuel on board, whereas takeoff weight includes payload weight as well as fuel weight. Next up is aircraft loading. What is aircraft loading and how are the cargoes packed and loaded onto the aircraft? Well, when the cargoes arrive at the airport, they undergo clearance in accordance with international regulations and limitations. Next, they will be weighed and be loaded based on either cargo type or aircraft type. Cargo type can be categorized under various forms such as valuable goods like gold and artwork or dangerous goods like corrosive and radioactive materials. Touching more on dangerous goods, they are not allowed to fly on commercial aircraft and failure to declare hazardous material may result in civil or criminal penalties for passengers. To add on, it is required for all airlines to report violations to the relevant government authorities. On the other hand, for aircraft types, it can be categorized as either narrow or wide body aircraft. Typically, for short haul narrow body aircraft, it will be bulk loaded. What exactly is bulk loading you might ask? Well, bulk loading is a loading of loose individual items of baggage such as live pets like domestic dogs. In this case, the loading of baggage will be by item count, with prescribed assumption about the average weight per bag used to complete the load and trim sheet. As for wide body aircraft, unit loading devices, also known as ULDs, will be utilized. Examples of ULDs are containers and pallets. Containers varies from LD1 to 11 and A2 based on their different volume and dimensions. As for pallets, they vary from LD7, 8 and 11. One thing to note is that the difference in container size can be expressed using ratios. For example, a LD6 is equivalent to two LD3s. So how are these ULDs being loaded, you may wonder. Well, they can be loaded using high loaders, joint pallet container loader also known as JCPL or bulk cargo loader. Moving on to mass and balance gross error checks. A load instruction or report form will be issued for every aircraft departure to instruct loading teams on the quantity of baggage and cargo to be loaded into each hold. This form will then be given to the loading supervisor to instruct the load team on how the aircraft needs to be loaded and to record formally the actual loading and any deviations. Once the aircraft is loaded, the form is generally provided to the crew for cross-checking against the load and trim sheet. Though sometimes the crew are provided with a certificate stating that the baggage and cargo has been loaded in accordance with the load and trim sheet instructions. With numerous weight and balance documentation formats and different industry procedures, the UK CAA guidance material titled CAP 1009 Cross Error Checks is recognised as best practice to countercheck. Unfortunately, taking a look at this statistic, there are many various basic factors such as poor communication, lack of training of personnel, and poor loading procedures which contributed to weight and balance related occurrences. Air Midwest Flight 5481 is an example of a weight and balance related incident. Just 15 years back, on 8 January 2003, ramp agents loaded 23 checked bags onto the aircraft, which included two unusually heavy bags. 
after the flight crew completed their pre-flight checklist, including weight and balance checks, they were cleared for takeoff. Approximately 35 seconds after takeoff, it crashed into an aircraft maintenance hangar and burst into flames. Upon further investigation into this incident, it was found that the aircraft had exceeded 580 pounds above its maximum allowable takeoff weight, with its set of gravity 5% rear of the allowable limits. Due to the use of incorrect FAA approved passenger weight estimates. In addition to the maximum operating weight, the distribution of weight is also a concern. When any aircraft equipments are changed, the person making the equipment change must make an entry on the equipment list, indicating the items added, removed, or relocated. Balance is maintained through the center of gravity of an aircraft whereby the CG must be located within specified limits for a safe flight. The CG of an aircraft is an imaginary point about which the nose heavy moments and the tail heavy moments are exactly equal in magnitude. Thus, when an aircraft is suspended from its CG point, it would have no tendency to rotate nose up or nose down. So how is the center of gravity related to the aircraft's weight and balance? If an aircraft's center of gravity is outside the limits, it would seriously impair the pilot's ability to control the aircraft. For example, it is more difficult to take off and gain altitude in a nose-heavy aircraft, and the aircraft would tend to drop its nose when the pilot reduces throttle. It also requires a higher speed to land safely. Prior to every flight, Pilots must determine the location of the CG with some buffer given to the varying fuel consumption. So to ensure the aircraft is operated in accordance with the manual which specifies the safety limits of where the CG is located. This is FCC speaking, requesting for the station manager of Singapore Airlines. Station manager for Singapore Airlines speaking. I'm calling to inform you that one of your flight, SQ306, destined for London Heathrow, is off trim. Please request for the aircraft to turn back, disallowing any further actions until the aircraft is back in trim and ready for flight. Roger. Flight SQ306, this is the station manager speaking. Please hold position and cancel takeoff. I repeat, cancel takeoff as your aircraft is out of trim. SQ-306, Roger. Takeoff cancelled. Returning to ramp. Good afternoon, this is your captain speaking. Due to an unforeseen situation, the takeoff has been cancelled and we will be returning to the boarding gate. Flight will resume upon further notice. SQ-306, as your aircraft is out of trim, we will be offloading all of your cargo along with five additional passengers. Roger. Cabin crew, please help to discharge five passengers. As you have seen in the scenario just now, the aircraft was out of trim and there was a need to offload all of the cargoes along with five additional passengers. However, are all of these actions necessary? Yes, it definitely is. An overloaded aircraft can impose extra loads and pressure on the aircraft structure, such as the wings and the landing gears. When overloaded, the aircraft would need to take off at a higher speed, resulting in a longer runway needed. Situations such as a reduced rate and angle of climb, a lower service ceiling, a reduction in cruising speed, decreased maneuver rate, and shortened cruising range will occur when the aircraft is out of trim. Additionally, having excessive weight in either the fore or the aft of the aircraft can cause either a nose down or nose up pitching moments respectively. So, as we can see, prior to every flight, the pilot in command needs to know the maximum allowable weight on the aircraft and its center of gravity limits. This allows the pilot to determine if the aircraft is properly loaded and if the center of gravity is within allowable limits during the pre-flight inspections. After coming along with us on this journey, I hope that you have gained a greater insight with regards to how important aircraft weight and balance is in flight operations 
as well as towards the overall safety of your flight. I hope we have sufficiently satisfied your curiosity and answered all of your questions. Thank you for coming along with us in this journey presented to you, Aircraft Weight and Balance.